hello everyone. Uh, good morning to all of you. I know we're uh, attendees joining us from all parts of the world today. So good morning to those of you west of us from California and a good afternoon or evening to the rest of us. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this exciting webinar on the topic, how fast growing businesses scale with Caspio. Uh, my name is Nick Sangui and I head alliances and business development at Caspio. And I'm very thrilled to have all of you attending today. Uh, we have some great speakers lined up for you and some great content coming up. Um, in my role, I consult with partners and prospects on whether working with Caspio is the right choice for them. And uh, so that's uh, you know, something that we'll cover uh, in today's webinar. And uh, we want to make this webinar a fun and interactive experience for everyone. So please go over to the chat, say hi, uh, drop us comments, uh, use the Q&A button um, to leave questions uh, for us throughout the course of the event. You'll find those buttons at the bottom of your uh, Zoom webinar window. And uh, we'll try to cover questions and comments in real time, but uh, we might have to save some of them towards the end of the webinar as well. Uh, and uh, so once again, thanks everyone uh, for uh, being here and for taking the time out to listen to us. To begin with, uh, we actually have a quick poll um, and uh, this, this will help in keeping things interactive. This is the same poll that was used by Forrester Research in their uh, survey of low-code, no-code platforms recently. So it'll be interesting to see how your responses compare to their findings, to Forrester's findings. And with that, I, this is the poll and you should see it uh, on your screen now. Uh, please go ahead and uh, to, you know, rank up to five choices uh, of in terms of what challenges does your organization currently experience when uh, digitizing processes. And uh, uh, I'll also list out the options uh, or, or read out the options here uh, for everyone's convenience. Strained or insufficient technical resources, data silos, takes too long to digitize processes with current tool sets, too locked into legacy systems, integration with existing systems and infrastructure, lack of governance over tools, time consuming discovery of business requirements, fragmented processes, expensive project costs, or uh, too many competing priorities. And I see a lot of uh, answers are already coming in. We'll give it just a few more seconds. Uh, please go ahead and take time uh, to choose your options, uh, rank uh, you know, any uh, up to the top five options. Uh, and here we go. Here is the uh, poll and some interesting findings here. Um, here, let me share the results with all of you. So a lot of you voted uh, for uh, strained or insufficient technical resources, 40% of you in fact. And uh, another one, a major challenge for uh, many of you has been integration with existing systems and infrastructure as well. So, and, and that resonates with what we heard from the Forrester study. Uh, and those uh, Forrester study results are also going to be shared with all of the webinar participants. So you'll be able to compare notes against those findings. And so with that, uh, let's move on. Uh, just a second. Let's move on to today's agenda. Um, so we have an information packed webinar. So I'll quickly share the agenda, get you over to our wonderful speakers. Uh, we're proud to co-host today's webinar with our partners solutions effort. And we have uh, Josh, Krish, and uh, Chris and, and Nikkei from uh, solutions effort along with uh, three of their clients. Um, I will kick things off by sharing what we are seeing in the low code, no code market in terms of how fast growing businesses are scaling with the help of platforms like Caspio. And then I'll turn it over to Josh. Uh, he and his team will share demos with us of various apps that they've built on the Caspio platform for their customers, such as Mosaic, RSR, 
at Mazo and Pacific Drivers Education. And we also have uh, the chief executives from all of these organizations here today to provide the customer's perspective on these projects. And, uh, and we really value and thank them for taking their uh, uh, time out as well for today's webinar. And uh, uh, this will be followed by a Q&A session, but feel free to keep your questions and comments coming in throughout the webinar as well. Right. Um, and of course, uh, we will be also sharing the recording of today's uh, discussion with all attendees once the webinar is completed. So with that, um, going on to the next slide, um, this is these are the two white papers from Forrester and IDC. Uh, as promised, we'll be offering all attendees with these white papers, so you can dive deeper into this space after the webinar. And these white papers also have a direct connection to the topic of today's webinar. So, uh, in fact, you'll see this for yourself when you go through them as well. But here, I want to quickly highlight one of the key points that's uh, the key points that's relevant to today's topic. So Forrester in their research found that businesses using low code platforms were twice as likely to describe their businesses as growing as opposed to uh, those who did not use low code platforms. So um, and that ties in directly to today's topic of uh, growing um, fast growing businesses. And um, I'm sure you'll find other insights as well valuable. And when you talk about scaling with low-code, no-code platforms, there's no one better than Caspio to support you in that journey. Uh, we've helped thousands of customers scale and grow with us. And among our differentiators are the fact that we don't charge you on a per user or a per developer based uh, pricing model. Because you can scale to thousands of users or hundreds of developers without your costs spiraling out of control. And, um, since Caspio applications are natively on the cloud, they can be deployed anywhere uh, in a matter of a couple of clicks. And last but not least, we are standards-based. So you can be very productive uh, very quickly without having to learn any new proprietary te technologies or frameworks. Caspio has been one of the first movers in the no-code space, and we've been perfecting our product for more than 20 years now. And that's one of the reasons why it's one of the most full-featured products in this space. We have 15,000 customers in 150 countries worldwide, many of whom have been with us for a very long time as well. And here are uh, some of the uh, logos of some notable customers that we uh, powered uh, their IT applications for. And uh, apart from these, these just some of the familiar logos, but apart from these, we also do cater to a wide variety of startups and mid-size enterprises, some of whom we'll be hearing from uh, in a few minutes from now. And uh, we're uh, really proud of the fact that we love our customers and they love us back. Uh, we've been rated as a leader in various categories on user review sites like G2, Captera, GetApp, and others. And uh, oops, while talking of scaling, uh, you can not only scale vertically in terms of users with us, but also very broadly across of, uh, various different functions. Uh, including, you know, you could start using us from a sales and marketing point of view and then switch over to operations, finance, supply chain, and others, as you will see in some of these examples in a few minutes. And uh, now before I turn it over to our partners and solutions effort, it's time for our second poll. And this is again from the Forrester Research uh, Survey. Uh, this time, the question is around what capabilities does your organization value most in a low-code or no-code platform? And let me bring it up here really quick. And there you go. Please select, again, like the first poll, please select up to five options. Uh, and uh, I'll read out the options for your convenience. Uh, the options are uh, in terms of uh, the capabilities that you would value most in a low-code, no-code platform are rapid application development and deployment, robust integration options, ease of updating applications, workflow automation, built-in governance and compliance, robust security controls, ease of use for non-technical users, 
enterprise grade capabilities, robust customization options, and unlimited users. Again, like the last poll, please select up to five capabilities that you or your organization values most in a low code or no code platform. And I see a lot of responses already coming in. We'll just do a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And yeah, let's end this poll and share the results with all of you. Um, so as you can see, uh, majority of you valued rapid application development and deployment uh, as one of the most important capabilities alongside workflow automation and ease of use for non-technical users, which are all strong suits of the Caspio platform. And uh, we'll be able to demonstrate some of those live to you in just a minute. Okay, um, so um, also we'll be, uh, just a reminder, we'll be sharing the Forrester report with all of you as well after the call, and that will allow you to see what 200 of your other peers felt when they asked, they were asked the same question by Forrester. And uh, now before I turn it over to our speakers, I will also remind the audience our Q&A and comments features live. Uh, I see a lot of uh, comments in the chat uh, window. Feel free to ask us questions as well with the Q&A. And, um, now to uh, introduce uh, Josh. Um, Josh Minsky is a is the founder of Solutions Effort. He's been uh, with the Caspio ecosystem as a certified developer for over 17 years. He's created custom applications using the power of Caspio for industries including media, government, healthcare, home service, and compliance. And some of the organizations that have benefited from Solutions of Hood's work include Disney, USA Today, Minsure, uh, which is the state of Minnesota's healthcare exchange, as well as, of course, the three wonderful clients that we'll be hearing from shortly. And um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with this, I give you Josh Shimansky, the founder of Solutions of Hood. Thank you, Nick, for the great introduction. When I think of Solutions Foot, I think of it as a culmination of a 17-year journey of relationships that have been forged in trust. Two of these forged relationships are with my partners, Chris Vaughn and Nikki Roach. Chris and I began our relationship as development competitors. Chris adds a tremendous value to Solutions Foot as its chief knowledge officer. Throughout his career, Chris used and evaluated various software applications some of which we now integrate with Caspio. Nikkei and I forged a relationship through various business networking groups over the years. He became a fan of my work and wanted to be a part of Solutions Foot because of, he believes in making a difference. Nikkei is our chief development officer, um, or what I call our hunter in charge. He leverages 30 years of relationships over various industries to find Solutions Foot its customers. I began my journey with Caspia when I was working in the media industry with companies such as Gannett, the parent company of USA Today, and Media Journal, the former parent company of the Richmond Times and the Sound Journal. Through the leadership of two great women, Julie Metzger and Michelle Johnson, I was taught to create something in, in, in the public that was interested in, but it was also being monetized. Four such products are the recipe database, central part of that database that I developed with Caspio um, hand in hand, the baby of the year contest and the voter guide. Some of these applications are still being used by media outlets today. 
After the media industry, my journey with Caspio continued to the state of Minnesota. Um, PMO director Jessica Anderson and Minnesota Insurance Marketplace, Minsure, had a problem. They had purchased the robust HIPAA compliant version of Caspio, but no one internally at Minsure could do the development. After a six month nationwide search, Jessica found me at the end of the rainbow. On, on my first day of work at Minsure, Jessica handed me a paragraph long document of the objective and said, go create which I in turn pushed back across her desk and said, not without a spec. After being locked in a room um, with business analysts, uh, Nick Hall for three weeks, learning about what was needed for the applications, uh, we, we ended up developing 11 applications, 48 screens, and 45 tables of data into a viable product. My experience, whoops. My experience in Minnesota taught me that through the power of Caspio's flexibility, that if one could dream an application, it could be developed with Caspio. At Solutions Foot, we use a version of this um, session that I did with Nick, which you know, finds our needs for our customers. We call it a forensic interview. Let's be real. How could we create an application to help our business, your business, if we don't know the ABCs of your business. We have to learn your business first before we're able to create an application for you. And that brings me to James McMichael. James McMichael is the managing partner of Mosaic RSR. He came to Solutions Foot with a similar problem to Minsure. He purchased Caspio for the development of his compliance law and knowledge base. But the first developer he had hired fell way short of his vast expectations. Welcome, James. Thank you. James, what problem were you looking to solve in your industry with Casper? Um, I mean, we were a startup, startup, um, and one of the key things that uh, we looked at some other low-code, no-code um, platforms, and um, as Nick had pointed out, the our use case is actually you know going to be to um, create a SaaS resell access to our platform to you know, thousands and thousands of users. So the model where um, our cost didn't balloon with our user base was really attractive to us. So that's, uh, and then did some reviews. And so that's what sort of brought us to Caspia. And the solutions for how did you come, come across us? Well, we first started our journey, I mean, Granted, I didn't know very much about the entire process. So I was pretty naive, to be honest. Um, but we started working with another uh, developer that I guess had some Caspio experience, but that 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 a third party um, didn't just, we had really kind of a bad experience working with them. Um, and so that kind of brought us back to the research table. Um, and that's when we, we found, um, found Solutions Afoot. Um, that's sort of what brought us to you guys. And the process has been a long process. We started off doing an MVP starting March of last year and finishing it in June of last year. And you had good response to the MVP. And from there, we've, we've created um, <laughs> lots of um, development since then, including um, interpreting into Chinese and cr creating various subdomains. We're gonna, we're gonna see a little video of what yeah. we've done for Mosaic. Cool. So this is our website. Yes. So first off, um, RSR, Mosaic RSR is a knowledge management platform. Uh, it provides all the laws and international standards for compliance. And it's made for both brands and for the suppliers. Would you like to elaborate how that works out in your, in your world, James? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our what our uh, use case is is that we work with 
brands and retailers around the world that are looking after and checking in on um, their factories that they work with all over the world. So they have a lot of expectations for their factories to meet all the local laws and to meet their standards around labor practices. Um, so this platform was created to be a tool that a brand or retailer can use to help support and provide a knowledge base to their factories that helps them comply with the laws of their country around labor standards and, and environmental standards. So that that's the purpose of the platform. Um, and, there's, and there's two ways to register for the platform as a supplier. Mm -hmm. You can go directly to the site and, and jo join independently uh, uh, for your own factory, or you can be invited. You, you, Mosaic or or a brand could give you an invite code where you'd be invited to use the system either for a discount or for free, but depending on, on a trial basis. And then it verifies who you got the code from and it allows you in the system based on after the verification. In this case, it was the Fours Americas. And once logged in, you can go through various parts of Mosaic RSR. Starting with, you can see how we have translated from English to Chinese very seamlessly and back. And so you, now, now we're going to see some more of the advanced feature. We created management systems for the use of so you, so you can drill down to subject matter. So in this case, we're going to look at compensation. So you can see all the information on compensation and all the, you can plan for it, you can, you can react to it. And then you can see what laws are tied to that compensation um, subject matter. And then drill down to the details of that law and see where you might have gone wrong in compliance. and give feedback on the content you, you have found. And if you want to see the content in Chinese, you're able to also. I would say that that one of the things that I think Solutions of Foot is because Chris and Josh and they work so closely together. It's you know the marriage between the the, the back end functionality that Caspio brings, but then bringing you know you still have to bring it to life on the front end. Um, and I think as somebody that didn't know a whole lot about building out an application myself, I didn't really understand just how important that relationship is and being able to integrate the front end with the back end and how hugely important that is. Um, and so the idea that you have a total front end developer and totally separate back end developer working in any kind of language just to me seems like really difficult. So that's uh, so anyway. we, we created an advanced search for Mosaic. You can search by brand severity, category, law title, jurisdiction, or Mosaic ID and cycle applicability. It allows you to drill down to specific laws or parts of laws in, in the knowledge base. 
as you're seeing, it's, this is a search by category, subcategory A, subcategory B, and it, it, and it finds all the laws associated with that search. So once you figured out a law is not in compliance, you can create an improvement plan. You name the improvement plan, you, you submit it, and then you can go, uh, also in Chinese, and you, you can expand part based on the complexity of where the, where the it came from. As you can see, you know, the architecture of how we had to create this is quite unique. Now you can go in and add laws to the plan or the laws that you're not in compliance with. And here's two laws that are not in the health and safety compliance. And now you can go in and Eventually, you get to the bottom of the screen. Start your supply implementation action steps. Um, upload pictures of the before and after of what after it's been worked, and update the file so eventually it could be re-audited and get back into compliance. So this is the journey that we've gone through with Mosaic. And it's been a, a great experience. Um, and James has been a great partner in the development of it. Thank you, James. Okay. Thank you for your work on this. My pleasure. So if you, now, if you, don't, if you don't mind real quick before just uh, answer a quick questions, a couple sure. of people were posting Q and A's asking about the hosting and how it was done. And this answer is gonna to apply to not only what was done with Mosaic, but also the other two case studies today. Um, all the data, most all the text uh, is all coded within uh, Caspio's database. We then use the Caspio JavaScript embed codes uh, inside a framework that we developed using custom HTML and front end work. Uh, in the Mosaic instance, it's done uh, on their Amazon AWS service that James has a license with. Steve uses a different web hosting platform and so does Kurt. So all the Caspio stuff is then brought into their uh, web environment, but all of the text you're gonna see, um, if, if for the mo except for Steve's front end sales website is all in Caspio. Yeah, that, that's a great point. We can also, uh, you know, later on, uh, we have Ned as well uh, on the webinar, and he can also show off how to embed codes and all work as well in a live setting. And um, speaking of Chris, Chris is going to bring on Kurt and discuss what we did with the Amazo. Hey, Kurt, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, and you, uh, you and I go back a number of years just as far as knowing each other. Uh, we met a little over a decade, a decade ago when you were running a networking group called the Eagle uh, uh, Group. Um, and I know Winston Greensboro, Raleigh, other things. Your career is involved. And recently, uh, I'll say recently, because I said we met over a decade ago, uh, you had the idea, the brainstorm for Edmazo. Uh, so why don't you briefly just tell everybody what Edmazo is, what you're trying to do, um, with it um, in, a, in a quick summary. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, consumers have been frustrated at how they engage us in the business community, and we're looking to solve uh, that without being a traditional point and click, you know, find a service, find an answer. Uh, so, you know, over the last year plus, I've been uh, working at changing the delivery systems. And part of it is to, to have it be a way that people can be involved in what they want, be able to find solutions over a wide range of, of things, anything from real estate to finance to how do I live healthy, nine pillars of total care. Uh, so, you know, I, I was one of those people that was trying to do it myself, uh, realized that I had reached my level of <laughs> and Excel spreadsheets, uh, just not been the solution that we've been looking for. So I've been, you know, pretty much cut and pasting uh, to get the main message of what we're looking to do, but for it to be very interactive and for it to be uh, really as robust as we want it to be. Uh, I, when Chris and I started talking a couple of months ago, he said, look, if we can find a way to uh, bring a better connectivity to it. Uh, he spent a lot of time, you know, he's known me sort of mindset wise, but this is a much more interactive environment. And that's why, you know, reconnecting with some of you know, but he also, you know, we spent time, we actually did a, a marketing survey to see how our members are already uh, viewing us and getting their input because uh, you know, obviously you got to find a way to know that what's happening is, is uh, doable. So now your, your project, we, we started working with you in December and what I just showed, you said you were kind of doing it yourself. What okay. I just showed is what you've been building kind of yourself over the last year or so, right on yeah. GoDaddy. And we are still in uh, build mode for you um and getting really close to launch uh within your environments and i know you've been managing everything using excel spreadsheets so as your organization's grown what is the problem you've kind of been running into trying to deal with uh everything on online offline databases like excel well part of it is as we've been adjusting to uh and learning what direction to, and making some decisions in which directions to go uh, you know, you have, we don't have the ability to, to, to make changes and maneuver. So, you know, we've had to uh, just have to work with what we have. And we've been looking for that, you know, better way that, you know, ability to do, uh, to be able to give direction to people, to have them interact with us in a different way. We want a relationship built so that people can find us, engage with us, uh, and we can do a better job of bringing caring entrepreneurs to them. And uh, as Chris was talking about this platform, uh, it's just actually the culture of it, the, the way we, we want to treat people and the way we want uh, you know, to, to bring really true professionals to them is important. So, you know, just a lot of different things that we needed to really make better. Uh, and that's that's our mission is we want to simplify people's lives. But we can't do it with you know without the technology supporting it. Uh, yeah, exactly right. And that's part of the reason we we suggested Caspio to him as part of this. As as Admezo is growing, you wanted to find out how people are learning about you. Uh, you wanted your members to get benefits from inviting other members. So uh, through the Caspio platform, we were able to create. Uh, unique referral links based on each of your users' IDs, and they're able to share that out. And uh, it's kind of like a little mini gamification that's being built in on the back end, right? To reward your members uh, mm -hmm. so that they can, uh, you can know how many people they've invited and send thank you gifts and things like that to them, uh, correct? Yes, correct. We're in, you know, we're growing, we're growing internally. We want it that way. We want to keep it that way. Uh, you know, our success is, is, is really to doing things together and sharing in that, you know, sharing the business that comes from it, uh, new relationships that come from it and being able to you know, engage people, you know, not just one at a time, but as, as people attend our meetings, they're very experiential where we really want people to get to know each other well and know that we're, we're you know, my, my role really in Mazo is talent scout. Uh, you know, I need to find caring entrepreneurs that, that give them that give as much as they can, 
and really truly want to work together in a team setting. That's what's important to us. Now, this, what I'm showing right now on the screen is uh, what we called the, uh, we ended up calling the needs generator, right? This came out of that flow of conversation you and I had of what your goals were and realizing that we could use the Caspio platform to help you build kind of a connection device uh, between the pillar partners that you are bringing on board and your community members. Um, so tell us exactly how this is going to help your community members, and also then your pillar partners uh, connect with each other? So when we talk about community members, we mean moms and dads, people at home, individuals at every, you know, from college students to retirees, finding, uh, be able to find the things that they need, even though they didn't know yesterday that they were going to be looking for it, to find sort of a one place, a one source solution where they can find it clearly. So the pillar, the nine pillars were the, were the easy way for people to identify the thing they, or at least the area that they needed to focus in. So something that has, has to do with, you know, a new entrepreneur, there's a lot of entrepreneurs coming out of corporate America these days and they're being frustrated. How do I learn and grow my business? Our entrepreneurial pillar is, has a lot of people who have a background in, in large companies who are now entrepreneurs that, that you know, I, years ago, I said, there's so much talent there, but the problem is there's a huge transition time. So that pillar and the live healthy pillar and all those nine pillars, it allows people to see it clear, simply that, hey, yeah, I need help to get a mortgage, the finance pillar. That's where I need to click. And it allows people to not have to migrate through just pointing and clicking because most websites are that way or, or apps are that way. You point and click until hopefully you find what you want. This way you can actually ask us directly once you identify the area, area that you want, and then we can connect you directly with the solution provider that we know is going to be perfect for, your, for that scenario. So as a, as a director, what you're seeing here um, is, you know, this is all dummy data because we're still in, in, in the beta launch mode for them uh, as far as the data. But what you're able to do here, Kurt, right, is search your members filter and know who's active, who's not. You're going to be able to look at the membership levels they're on, um, easily get in touch with them because email addresses, phone numbers are all going to be accessible to you. Uh, wherever you are, you're not going to be dependent on, you could access this from your phone. You're not going to have to be dependent on having that Excel sheet uh, right in front of you uh, on that laptop. You, you get to access and see all your members' profiles. And if someone is a little uh, not tech savvy, so to speak, right? Because we all we all have clients who aren't super tech savvy. Um, and you're able to go in and even help them update their profiles mm -hmm. so that their profiles are correct. Uh, and then what we're showing here is the view of when someone submits a request, your ability and your admin's ability to go in and look at what pillar it is and then actually assign that request to a specific pillar partner so that you're able to make sure that the mom, dad, the community member, is um, their request is met by a pillar partner that you vetted and trusted and you're getting reviews and feedback on. Is that correct? That's correct. And you know, that workflow, uh, one of the things I think we've talked about as well is being able to actually see what's going on along the way. So, you know, where do you get the ability to say, hey, where's my, where's my work that you're doing for me? What's happening with it? Uh, usually you're trying to call into a business and find out what's going on. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this platform is going to actually let the consumer see where, where, where's, where's my, you know, what's happening with what I asked for. I mean, that to me is just as engaging as we can be. Awesome. Kurt, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that uh, you're going to be excited as soon as it's done. Uh, <laughs> that's just a little bit of the, the back end that's being worked on, uh, but I, I know you're, you, you've already told me how, how excited you are and, and some of your members are, and I know some of your members are on the call right now, especially your pillar partners, uh, yeah. and this is, uh, this is what they're excited to see coming out, so. Uh, we're, we're, we've been preparing. It hasn't slowed our growth down, but uh, we're at the point that, you know, we're, we're getting uh, the requests that we want. We're launching actually new services, which will be incredible. We're going to be providing things like tax preparation all over the country and 
people are coming out of the woodwork saying, "Hey, we love your platform. Can we? How can we be part of it?" So, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't turn that away. And thank you for all of our members on here who came out to see what's going on. Here's your team. Thanks, Kurt. I'm going to go back now to Josh uh, and the last of our case studies for today. And thank there you, was also a quick question, maybe if you want to address it right now, Chris, uh, from I think Greg. Uh, yep, I was asking. actually typing. I was in the process of typing it back to him, but I can go ahead and just verbally answer it. That's perfectly fine. Greg, you uh, said, this is cool. Is this a data page reports type question mark? Yes, a lot of our um, uh, coding and what we're doing inside Caspio uses obviously an initial form submission. And then from there, a uh, variety of data pages that deal with uh, reports, uh, especially tabular, uh, tabular, and then details page results. And then inside the details page results, we like to get into the HTML blocks so that we can design them and customize them. So what you saw with the member profile, I don't know the exact time you sent this message, but when you saw his member profile, that was a combination of how we use some HTML blocks with the uh, reports in the field showing up inside the details page. Chris, I have to mention one last thing. I'll make Pat Taylor happy that we're gonna have a, uh, a way to get our events uh, notified on target. Uh, uh, that will that will make everyone smile. <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. So, the last of our panelists that we're going to bring on is Steve Lentz. Steve um, came to Caspio um, on his own. He went through the trainings with Ned. And he started developing his, his application on his own. The other day, when, when we asked Steve regarding it, oops, got to get on the right screen. He, he compared um, developing on Caspio to having a submarine and not, to try to navigate it when you're only capable of navigating a rover. So let me welcome Steve Lentz. Good morning, Steve. Good afternoon, Steve, sorry. Hey, yes. Hello, everyone. So are you, are you enjoying the ride on the submarine or are you want to go back to your robot? Um, I think driving or riding in or being in a submarine would be the most scary thing in the world. I'm a little claustrophobic. I prefer the rowboat, but I need a submarine. So that's why you guys came along. Yeah. So, Steve, what has Solutions Foot accomplished for Pacific Driver Education? Um, well, it, it, it's more of a story. It all started with Ned when I signed up with Caspio. We were using another program uh, that was basically a relational spreadsheet. Um, it, it was very complicated, and I, I spent an, just way too much money on um, help building the relations. And half the time they didn't work, they, they'd break or the server would uh, go down. So I needed to find something, I started looking. I literally looked at every opportunity out there and this no code, low code thing kept popping up. And the more I read about it, the more I was convinced that's what I needed. Started watching the videos from Ned bought, you know, drank the Kool-Aid <laughs> and uh, decided to jump in and, and do the Caspio thing because our system, we were, we were doubling in sales every year. You can't run a business um, with six figures when you're doing spreadsheet stuff. So it was just too complicated. Uh, Ned convinced me that uh, the way his attitude, Nick said something at the very beginning, which is really important. He says, we love our customers. And I, the, I, I'm a teacher. That's what I do. And our customers need to learn how to drive safely. And it's those people that I really like. Uh, my employees really like our customers. And the systems that we want to build help us uh, show that love, if you will, to our customers. And they just keep coming back. 
Um, I've had kids go through my class uh, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, that went through college and got married and said, when, when my son is ready, I'm bringing him over to you. So it's, it's just a perfect place to be. But um, uh, Solutions Afoot did four things for me. First, they helped me think about the overall structure from the point of view of my client and the point of view of my employees. I had to stop looking at the information that was coming across my desk and saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to look at this or I don't know how to deal with this. I needed to start looking at it like, what does my customer need? What, what do my employees need to do a better job? So it was a, uh, it was a pivot point for thinking for me. Uh, next, uh, since I had been starting the build, um, it was almost like I, I know how to build a house. I can do that. But I have no idea how to run the electrical and the plumbing. Uh, I can do everything else. I've done everything else. But the electrical and the plumbing scare me to death. Um, so they helped me with the refinement, the, um, the high technology stuff in the house, so to speak. Uh, bell, I, some people call them bells and whistles. I call them accoutrements that work for me. And they help me build those things. Third, they helped me fine tune all the connections that I had. And I had a lot. I had employees. I have vendors, I have dozens of vehicles, and I've got corporate accounts, Nike and Intel being amongst them. Um, and I needed to connect all that stuff together and they helped me figure that out. Um, the biggest thing they brought to the game was how to create a plan for, for driving lessons. Uh, we were scheduling our driving lessons literally by hand. And they put together a, a, a system whereby we could then um, send out an email. The customer would then uh, sign up for a time for us to call them. We would call them and then schedule their drive lessons. In the past, it was all done via, via email. So you'd send an email, they weren't home. Two days later, you get a reply. Um, we got overloaded and couldn't get to them for two days. And then we sent another email and they're not home. It's just back and forth and back and forth. And sometimes it would take three weeks to schedule a lesson. And that has been shortened by just a few days. Um, lastly, and I think more importantly, um, I, like I said, I, I'm a builder and I want to build things and create things like this. And they helped me figure out how to do it. And they were extremely patient uh, with me as I asked the most stupid questions. And they just said, hey, it's okay, Steve, don't worry about it. Here's how you do it. And then they would show me. And that way I could actually go forward and do that on my own next time. Not that I was trying to cheat them out of any money, but I just want to make sure I understand the process um, so I can utilize those features or those skills in a different area in the system. So they, they were extremely patient with me. So, I think that's about all you brought. <laughs> and, and you've turned out to be some pretty good friends. I mean, um, likewise. Yeah, I, I consider you my friend, both of you guys. So uh, as you can see on the screen, you're able to, from either a student or a staff point of view, update your information and log in as a parent, a student. You know, if the parent has four kids, you can use one email address to um, register for four kids and, this ch and the profile of the kid just changes. It's pretty nice technology instead of having to use four separate email addresses and, and like, like most sites require. So now you're able to sign up for the lesson and it'll, it'll bring up a scheduling calendar where you can schedule a call and someone will, will 
will call you with at the, at the given time you asked for. And I'm sure this helps his staff get organized for, to do what and when. Right, yeah. right Steve? Uh, absolutely. And now he's able to keep track of all the communications that come through. Not only the, the scheduled lessons, the, the, all the trainings and, and, the, and the driving test, but any communications that come through through the profile, it, it, they, they can have a conversation between the student and the, and the instructor or the or him and an and, and instructor without ever leaving the system. So that's the power of what Caspi can bring and what solutions foot could develop for a client. And here's here's that a profile and you're able to this is for the on the corporate side, I believe. No, nope, sorry, I was a little ahead of time. This is where the student can yeah. message. One of the things too, you guys did. You helped me with the. Um, a lot of times we'd schedule a lesson, and the student didn't have a permit, or he was the wrong age for the particular class they signed up for, and a lot of times we didn't know that until they showed up. And now we can tell, you know, that in this student here, Chris, um, apparently doesn't have a, a valid license. So we would we would take care of that through a, a phone call, um, give Chris a call and say, hey, uh, you don't have a license or a permit. We can't teach you to drive. So uh, that cut down some interesting embarrassments. And if anyone's seen Chris drive, you can understand why not. I actually made a note that he's he's got some problems we need to work on. So, <laughs> so Chris, and, and right now we're going through all his corporate clients, right? Be able to see and communicate with those clients and leave notes for the client. And this, and, and this was a, this was a big one um, for Steve as as we, as we were continuing to build out because of how you have to do some of your billing, correct? You needed ways. Yeah. Right. For certain. So if you want to expand the bottom, how this helped you um, keep all that together and organized. And uh, I, as you can see, it keeps track of all the communications from the client to um, PDE and backwards. So if there's ever any doubts to what, what was communicated, they can always go back to the communications and see what it's the date it came in on and look at the reference. So nothing gets lost. Right. And just for everyone's sake, um, that gray bar is just hiding personal information. Yes. License plates, permit numbers, um, emails for customers. Thank you for that reference. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, this site is now live. His employees can can you know go through HR stuff and log their hours and all that kind of stuff, and, and it makes Steve's life a lot easier now that the system is handling it for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he's scheduling a student. Yeah, we do. Uh, if you want to take a drive test in Oregon, you can come to our office and we can administer the drive test. And dealing with the government is, um, uh, how do I say this nicely, uh, difficult sometimes. And the regulations um, that, that go along with dealing with an entity like uh, the state government is, it's enormous. And we've got to keep track of all that stuff. Um, this is one of the areas I'm still working on as far as filling out information. Um, but I can't remember the guy, the first guy that we that you showed, some of his um, 
drop downs were what I had envisioned. So I need to talk to you about helping me build this out a little bit. Yeah. So for <laughs> go ahead, Chris. I said that's what that's what we're there for. So when you were we're a Zoom and a phone call way. It's it's been fun working with you, Steve, on it. Um, and I've just I, I know I've enjoyed the process of being on a Zoom and literally talking through it and making updates right and going through it together on a on a Zoom call. So yeah, yeah. It's when they say no code, low code, they absolutely mean it. I did a lot of the work myself. And again, if you show me HTML. I have no idea what it says, but I know what it does. And so I can change things like the color or um, the link. Uh, and so I just copy it and put it somewhere else and change the color and link and we're good to go. I don't need to call. Um, it, it's just, I don't know, Caspio, what can I say? You guys are outstanding. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Steve, and thanks for your kind words earlier as well. Uh, and we really do, right? I mean, it's a company ethos of being completely, you know, customer oriented and, and really uh, rooting for the customer and trying to solve their problems. Um, and and, and we, you'll see that, as I'm sure many of you on the call also have experience across the board, right, from uh, the sales uh, team to the account management team to uh, you know, the project management team, if you end up working with them, or to our support, if you ever, you know, and, and those are the things that you, uh, you know, oftentimes don't experience firsthand, but our customer support has, you know, been rated as one of the best in our space as well, Twen true 24 by 7 by 365 support uh, uh, around the clock, around the year. Um, you know, and, and through all means possible, right? Email, phone, chat, whatever works for you guys. So yeah, that, that was great. Thanks a lot uh, to Steve and um, Solutions of Foot Team for sharing this experience as well. Yeah, so I got a question for Ned. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so Ned, you know, you know what it takes to pull off like a, a design like Mosaic, right? You I know, do, yes. <laughs> so, in your experience, how many hours would that take without having the ability of Caspio? Oh, that's a good question. I wish I could see a little bit of the back end too to see how much was uh, done on the front end design with the HTML blocks. But my best guesstimate would be probably a few days, maybe two or three days, four days. And the, the main functionality itself can be done quickly. Uh, with our no-code platform, but adding all of the aesthetics and nuances around the HTML blogs to polish up the look and feel, I would say maybe a few more days. I don't know, all in all, maybe seven seven days, seven to 10 days, is or, if, I, if I had to guess. For, yeah, for, we, gotta, we gotta show you the back end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there's more happening with the API and the back end stuff, it could take longer. I just don't have access to the back end to see what was done. Um, I know what it takes to build forms and reports in Caspio quickly, but adding all the JS and HTML, if there is more dynamic workflows in the app, it could take longer. It just it, depends Josh, on. Josh, that was probably an unfair question. He doesn't realize there's 400 data pages in the system for that. Oh, 400. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that could take longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. There, but it's, you know, you phase it out. You know, you do phase one, phase two, phase three until the whole app is done. You can go live with the beta in a month. And then of, building an application, if you ask me, it's a never ending process. There's always something to modify, add, change, depending on the business and how the business evolves. But uh, yeah, as yeah. long as you're putting in the right framework and the foundation, you can build something very quickly. But over time, uh, it could be a little bit more involved and it could take months yeah. to even have, I mean, 400 data pages is a lot. So I'm, I'm yeah, guessing we that'll from, take longer. Yeah, we went from an MVP of 20 pages okay. to now um, over 400 pages, um, four different um, subdomains translated into Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, it was quite undertaking and, and, it's going to start paying dividends for James and his team in the very near future. 
Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to have to guess again. That must have taken a while to develop that. So yes, uh, <laughs> it, it, I heard it, that. It, and I was like, tra- what? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the translation. The translation itself took more than a week. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. Work in progress. Yeah, my apologies. I just, I mean, I all I, I was basing it based on what, what I was seeing on the front end side, but I'm sure there's a lot more reports, predefined criteria, and things like that in the back end, yeah. which takes a lot longer. And lots of uh, uh, triggers and and task and 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 scheduled task and and mm. you name it, it, it's in there. <laughs> but it, it, it was a good undertaking, and, and James, like I said earlier, has been a great um, partner in developing this. And like I said, hopefully next week, he, he, he starts blasting it out to his list of suppliers, and he can start getting dividends from all the hard work. Thank you, guys. Well, my pleasure. Yeah, it sounds like a monumental undertaking, but I'm glad you guys were able to get it done. Yeah. Nick, anything else? Uh, no, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot um, uh, to all of you, uh, wonderful speakers, for all the insights that you shared today. Um, in the audience, I, I saw quite a few questions uh, come in, and, and many of them were responded as well in real time. Uh, maybe some of those, if we just want to uh, read them out, uh, Chris, and, and might benefit everyone as well. And then please feel free to uh, keep your questions coming in. Um, uh, we'll, we'll address them. I just have one more slide to cover and we'll address them uh, after that. Um, so um, yeah, this this is, a, a, I know that there's quite a few other Caspio partners on the call as well. So I wanted to, as well as customers and prospects. Uh, so I wanted to uh, quickly uh, mention that our partner directory has been in the works. It is, of course, uh, as you would expect, being built on the Caspio platform. So we do drink our own champagne, and um, so it will be launched. Uh, it will be launched soon. Uh, and I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of, of what you can expect. Um, this will allow uh, customers uh, of Caspio to look for Caspio certified partners and uh, to reach out to them with their project requirements. And it'll also allow partners to get visibility in front of the thousands of leads that we get every month uh, on our website. Many of them, just like uh, the three clients here, uh, needing help from external uh, uh, development partners. So they'll be able to look at uh, our partners worldwide, select the ones that work best for them, and uh, reach out to them with their project requirements. And uh, so, yeah, uh, with that, we are, uh, we've covered the uh, main content that we wanted to cover on the webinar, and we'll open it up for Q&A now. Uh, so in, in case you guys, any of you were waiting uh, to, uh, for the webinar to complete before bringing up your questions, please feel free to do so in using the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, Greg, Gregory uh, asked a bunch of good questions during it, and I tried to answer them all. Hopefully, people got to see the answers. Uh, there's one, Nick or Ned, you guys might need to answer. He just posted uh, something about in-person Caspio events this spring. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, so this pandemic has really, uh, you know, kind of thrown us uh, spanner in the works kind of for uh, all of us we kind of keep expecting offices to reopen and then another variant comes along and events and offices and everything again goes back into shutdown mode but hopefully uh, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we should hopefully be able to start doing events uh, soon so um, I know that everyone at Caspio has also been asking for an opportunity to start meeting up with our customers partners and prospects uh, we don't have anything planned on the calendar yet, but uh, we'll definitely keep you all posted through uh, through our website, through our newsletters, Greg. As well. I like Greg's question about um, the calendar future. Uh, Chris answered it very distinctly. You can integrate with 
Google calendars and Office 365. And if and we use Acuity at Solutions Afoot to get people's schedules onto a platform so they, they can see the availability of the staff and stuff like that. Yes, I want to thank Nick and Ned and, and, and everybody from Caspio for letting us be on uh, with you guys. And this, uh, we're excited to be partners of Caspio. Um, we believe, obviously believe in Caspio and use it, as you can see, with just, not just these clients, but with other ones. And um, just we're excited to be able to have a platform like yours behind the work we're able to put out for our clients. Absolutely. And, and likewise, we appreciate um, you, know, you guys, Solutions Upper, Josh, Chris, uh, Nikkei, and um, you know, all, all our com common combined clients that have joined on the call, taken out their valuable time today as well. Steve, James, and Kurt, thanks a lot to all of you for your valuable time today. And th uh, thanks to everyone in the audience as well for taking the time out to listen to us. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, just as a wrap up, uh, you know, we tried to cover all our all the questions that were brought up on today's webinar live. Uh, but I'm sure you know maybe if you, any of you have other questions that you want to follow up uh, offline with us, or for those who are viewing the recording of this uh, webinar, uh, you can reach out to us at www.caspio.com or to the Solutions Afoot team at www.solutionsafoot.com uh, or uh, send us an email at partners at caspio.com as well. And um, our contact info is also here uh, for both Josh and myself. Uh, we are easy to reach. We look forward to hearing back from you. Uh, and uh, so with that, uh, it's a wrap, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Take care.